Welcome to Karis Daily Live Bible Study. Join believers from around the globe to study the Bible with Andrew Womack and instructors from Karis Bible College. Hello and good morning. We're so excited that you're tuning in to Karis Daily Live Bible Study. So we want you to interact with this. This is why we do it live is so that you can interact with us. So there's a few ways that you can interact. In some of the forums that you're watching on, you're able to go to the chat section. If that's not available, I would encourage you to jump over to gospeltruth.tv and you can start entering in questions in the chat section as we listen to Carrie minister this morning. Then about the last 10 to 15 minutes of the program, we're going to get to as many of your questions as we possibly can. So you can either put them in the chat section or you can email the questions to us at livequestions at awmi.net or you can text them to us, which I think is super cool, at 719-212-2555. So in order for you to interact with us, uh, you need to know our schedule. So on Mondays and Fridays, if you don't, didn't know already, on Mondays and Fridays, we have Bible study at 10 a.m. Tuesdays and Thursdays is at 6 p.m. And Wednesday morning is at 7 a.m. And that is all mountain time. So please calculate that out, tune in while we're live and send in your questions. Also, we have prayer ministers of available to you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So no matter what time you are watching this program, if you're going through something, please don't hesitate to give our prayer ministers a call. They can direct you towards the Word of God. They can direct you towards Andrew's over 200,000 hours of free material. That's just the free stuff that's on the um, ministry website. So if you're going through something, do not hesitate. Give them a call at 719-635-1111. Also, while you're on the phone with them, I would encourage you to become a partner or to give towards this ministry. I know you're being abundantly blessed by all this live content and everything this ministry is doing, and you can be a part of it simply by giving. So don't hesitate. Give them a call at 719-635-1111. And so without further ado, I get to uh, introduce our speaker this morning, who is Carrie Pickett. Welcome, hey. Carrie. Hello, everybody. Good She's, morning. She's uh, one of our favorites. She's kind of <laughs> like one of those gals that you want to be when you grow up. And <laughs> and, um, and so let me give her title. So she's Assistant Vice President of Karis Bible College and International Operations for Karis Bible College and for this ministry. She's also Director of Karis Bible College here in Woodland Park. And she's Director of our Global Training Third Year Track here in Woodland Park. It's, yeah. it's amazing. She wears a lot of hats and she's an excellent teacher of the word. So we're ready for whatever you got. <clears throat> well, thank you so much. Yes, absolutely. Well, happy belated Thanksgiving. Yes. I know everybody's probably still eating leftovers, which I love about this whole Thanksgiving week. And so uh, just welcome. And I'm really excited to be able to share with you this morning. So thank you, Julie. And yes, doesn't she do awesome? She's such a blessing to us. Okay. So this morning I want to talk about resisting the devil. Mm. I thought about titling this, how to kick the devil in the teeth, because that's what, uh, how I raise our, our kids, you know, when they, when they're getting fearful, I'm like, Hey, the devil's nobody just kick him in the head, kick him in the teeth. And so my son who's eight really gets a hold of that. So anyway, <laughs> however, that's going to help you this morning. I want to talk about resisting the devil. And so this is really key because, you know, sometimes what happens when we're as believers, um, you know, we're putting the word in, we're loving the Lord, we're trying to understand how God sees us, but we do have an enemy. And so many times people forget that, well, they, they don't forget they have an enemy, but they don't know how to resist him. And there is more than just, oh, in the name of Jesus, there is an attitude and an understanding. And then just um, kind of in, even in this last sister, walking with a family member through something, there is an active way, an intentional way that you resist the devil. And it's got to be consistent. It's not just like one day we resist, we're strong, but then the rest of the time we're, you know, frustrated and the way we speak over things is all matching the devil. So resisting the devil really is about how do we come into the consistency of knowing who we are, who God is, our authority, and then using it. So I'm just going to give you some principles this morning. Like I said, I am doing this actively with some family members as they're going through some different things. So just how even this is not just for you, 
of maybe how you're resisting the devil, but how do you stand alongside someone as they go through an issue and you resist the enemy with them? And so again, you can't resist the enemy for them, but you can resist the enemy with them and your prayers have power. So I wanna talk about this kind of in two different ways, whether you're the one resisting the devil or you're standing say for a, a child or you're standing for your business or you're standing for uh, the nation. However, how do we resist the devil? So there's some key principles. So. First of all, I want us to turn to James chapter four, verse seven. Now, James is an amazing, uh, amazing book of the Bible. And it talks about this verse. And I, I want us to go to this because James chapter four, verse seven says this. Um, we're going to read this together. And he says, but um, he says, submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Now, I know that many people know this verse, resist the devil and he will flee from you. And that's powerful. But one of the key things when we talk about resisting the devil is the first part of this verse. And that is submit yourselves, therefore, to God. And this, this is part of the part of the battle, part of the real authority that comes out when we resist the devil is that we have to be submitting to God. We can't just be living in the flesh, doing our own thing, you know, all that. And then we're trying to resist the devil. It's hard to actually resist the devil uh, when you're doing your own thing because you don't recognize him. And so, but when you actually are submitting yourself to God, you're submitting yourself, your life, your family, your marriage, your health, when you're submitting things to God and saying, God, you are in charge. When the enemy comes, it's so much easier to see who the enemy is. Have you ever, when I say that people will be like, Carrie, you know, of course we're going to recognize the enemy. Not always. Sometimes it's really subtle how the devil comes. Discontentment, frustration, offense, annoyance. It's just those little things. And you don't even realize until two weeks later when you're like bad mouthing, you know, a cousin or a family member or your husband, you realize, man, I've been offended. Or sometimes you'll get that little, you know, I got a headache. Oh, I got a headache. Oh, I got a pain in my knee. Oh, I just got a kink in my back. And it's like months, literally months when you're like, why am I, why am I letting this happen? No, wait a minute. I have authority. You know, oh it's, oh, it's just my shoulder. Oh, it's just my shoulder. I had that happen. Oh, it's just my shoulder. It's just my shoulder. And then all of a sudden I was like, man, I'm waking up in the middle of the night with a sore shoulder every day. And I haven't even realized this is the enemy attacking me. I was like, oh, well, you know, I just sleep well. Well, he was affecting not only my shoulder, but my sleep and my patience and my, <laughs> my morning routine. It was like, wait a minute. So what can happen is sometimes it's just, just life can happen. And we realize, Oh, wait a minute, after weeks or months and sometimes years for some people that they realize the enemy's been strategically attacking their family or their marriage or an offense with something. So I'm going to just encourage you. This is something that's really important of how you submit to God, because when you're submitting to God, you're saying, Lord, here's my life. Here's my family. Here's my body. If there's anything that's not of you, anything that's not the life of you word, reveal to me. And sometimes you'll start to see things you're like, oh, man, that's not of God. And so when you realize something's not of God, that's when you start to resist the devil. That's when you say, wait a minute, you have no authority. And I'll tell you this, when you're submitting yourself to God, there's just, a, there's just more of this understanding of you're walking in the spirit. You're not walking in the flesh. So you're not in partnership with the devil while you're trying to resist him, right? <laughs> that's, that's a key thing. And so submitting yourself to God, therefore submit yourself to God, resist the devil, Right. And then I love the verse. He says, and he will flee from you. That's a promise of the Lord. It didn't say resist the devil and he might flee. He sometimes will flee. It depends on how much you pray. No, it says if you're submitting to God and you're resisting the devil, he has to flee. And so I don't know if I've said this uh, on, on Live Bible Study. It's been a while since I've been with you guys, but it is something that I've just been ministering a, a lot recently to family and friends and to the student body here at Karis. The thing is, if we, <clears throat> excuse me, if we do not resist the devil, he will not flee. So here's the thing. You need to be able to recognize what is the enemy so that you can resist him. If you don't recognize what's of the enemy, he is going to stay. He's going to continue bringing all the sickness. He's going to continue bringing doubt, unbelief, fear, judgment, offense, all those things. So I start off this message with saying that you have the ability to resist the devil. 
You have been given that authority, that right, that position as a child of God. And because as a child of God, if you resist him, he will flee. So that means that every time I pray and say, enemy in the name of Jesus, you have to go. And I, uh, man, I'm praying he is fleeing. Now, let me say this. People will say, well, I'll resist him. But then like the symptoms come back or, you know, then my husband does something else or my child does something else or my wife does, right? There's all this. Well, I'm not saying that he doesn't come back. He'll try to come back, but you keep resisting him and he has to keep fleeing. It's a promise. It is a command of the Lord. Resist him. He has to flee. Now he may try to come in another way and he may try to say, okay, well, you know, your sore throat went away, but now you have a, you know, now you have a cough or he'll try to come. Cause I remember my kids, you know, and we were, te- we're still teaching, but especially when they were younger, you know, my son would come, mom, I've got a sore throat. I'm like, okay, let's pray. Devil, you have no authority. You get out of my son. We resist this. You know, we rebuke it, curse it. It has to leave right now. We just speak these symptoms of sore throat. Go. Michael's not sick. There's no room in his body for sickness. Okay. How do you feel? Oh, I feel better. Okay, good. And so they come back uh, an hour or two later. Mom, my throat hurts. Okay, man, dumb devil. Well, let's pray again, right? And so I remember we were we were saying this and my son goes, mom, why does it keep coming back? And that's a big question. You know, that's, that's, a, that's like a, that was a five-year-old question that most of us have in our, in our, in our, as adults, why does he keep coming back? And I looked at my son and I, and I knew that my answer was really important. And I looked at him and I said, well, he keeps coming back because he's stupid. <laughs> and he just got it. I'm like, because he just, he'll keep trying. He'll keep trying because he is stupid. But he also knows that if he can wear us down, if we stop resisting him, then he'll stay. And so this is really important that we understand we can resist him. We can resist him consistently and he has to flee. Now, if he tries to come back, you resist him again because you keep that attitude, right? So now people will say, well, I just get worn down in the fight. Carrie, I'm dealing with something long-term, whether it's in your body or long-term situation. And that can sometimes cause a lot of just discouragement and weariness. And so I'm going to encourage yourself. That is why the, the verse says, submit yourself, therefore, to God. You have to go to the word. You have to be in the word. You have to be in relationship with God to keep that encouragement of your heart so that you recognize and you keep resisting the devil on whatever fronts, however many various tactics he tries to use to try to come steal, kill, and destroy. John chapter 10, verse 10. He's going to try. But again, he's stupid. But he's persistent. So guess what? We have the mind of Christ. So we can realize, hey, if I keep submitting myself to the Lord, I can keep my heart encouraged and I can keep looking, recognizing and rebuking. Amen. So I want to talk about a couple different things here. Um, And I want us to turn to Isaiah chapter 54. Now, this is a a powerful verse. Isaiah chapter 54, verse 17. Um, I love Isaiah. It's, It's probably one of my I'll say my favorite chapters, but every chapter in the Bible is my favorite. (laughs) Okay, but Isaiah chapter 54, um, in verse 17, it says this. No weapon that is fashioned against you shall succeed. Or other versions say prosper. Meaning it's not going to have success, right? It's not going to prosper. It's not going to flourish in your life. And you shall confute or condemn every tongue that rises against you in judgment. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord and their vindication from me declares the Lord. Other versions say, and their righteousness from me declares the Lord. When I think of it, it's like they use vindication and righteousness changed together. So it's, I love this because the heritage of the servants of the Lord is that they're righteous. So that means they have a position of righteousness with the Lord to resist the devil, right? It's their position. I am a child of God. It's also their vindication Amen. that because of the righteousness of God, because of that vindication comes from God. So he'll, he'll repay the enemy. Yeah. And so anytime the enemy, and I love the verse that talks about anytime the enemy is trying to steal, he has to return sevenfold. And so there's things that you'll feel like, man, there's been something stolen in my life. All right, we'll get an attitude. And you tell the enemy, you have to replace this. Mike and I had uh, probably 30, it was between 30 and $50,000 uh, stolen from us. Oh my goodness. Uh, 
uh, one time, and it was while we were missionaries, which is always hard, you know, and it was part of Mike saving. And I remember we just decided, you know what, we're going to bless it. We're just going to let it go, and we're going to bless it. And I started specifically saying, and there will be a return on that. And it's specifically going to go towards um, a place to live. Because that's what it had gotten stolen. Someone had stolen it for their home. And um, so we said, okay, you know what? Bless you. Enjoy. But it's going to go towards our home. And it was interesting. After we got off the mission, well, even while we are still in the mission field, we got blessed with this amazing property uh, that just absolutely was, was truly sevenfold return. Hmm. And so, and just even from then when we sold and we did, and it's just absolutely been a floodgate from the Lord because we chose not to take offense. And we just told the devil, you have to repay. Not these people, you know, they made mistakes. We release them, we forgive them, God bless them. But devil, you have to restore. And you know what? It was years later, but every time we thought about it, we just said, nope, the devil has to repay. And he did. And now the home that we're living in, I totally look around and say, this is because we did not get offended. Amen. This is because we let go of something and told the enemy, you will repay us. Right? So I'm just going to encourage you guys. You have an, there's an attitude within you. There is a, a righteous position of God within you that can resist the devil, but also say nothing that you try to do is going to prosper. Amen. It's not going to succeed. And so you, and what's a powerful guys is you got to have this attitude within you. And this is why I'm teaching you now. So maybe you're not going through any battle right now. Mm -hmm. Praise God. But you've got to get this inside of you so that when a battle comes, you say, no, 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 no. I don't think so. You don't have a right in my family. You don't have a right to, to hit us with sickness. You don't have a right to touch us with financial. You know, you just, you start to say, wait, 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 no devil. Who do you think you are? Nothing you do in my life shall prosper. And that's why it says no weapon formed against you that is fashioned against you shall prosper. I would encourage you with that circle, no weapon. Because weapons come in different ways. The enemy will try, you know, whether it's attitudes, whether it's people, loved ones, enemies, employers, governments, regulations, laws, rules, taxes. I don't care what it is that you feel is, is trying to steal, kill, and destroy. You say, no, I do not receive this weapon. No weapon formed against me, fashioned against me, shall succeed or prosper. And it says, and you shall, you shall not your pastor, not your spouse. It says, you shall condemn every tongue that rises against you in judgment. And when it talks about tongues, it's not just like you start yelling at your husband, you start yelling at your kids, and start yelling at your spouse. I condemn you. The Bible says I condemn you in judgment. No, no, no. No, everything that rises against you in judgment, understand it's coming from the enemy, Amen. right? Yeah. And so you can take those things that people are saying to you that are negative, filled with doubt, filled with unbelief. I had someone confess over me last week, you will get the virus. You will get COVID. What? Like, it was just like one of those, I'm just like, no, I'm not. But then later <laughs> I was just like, who the heck are you to tell me what I'm going to get? And I was just like... <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, hallelujah. So not getting <laughs> mad at them, but just saying, no, every tongue that tries to say what's going to happen in my life, I rebuke it. Yeah. No matter what somebody's concern or love or whatever it is for me. No, I, everything that tries to say something that's not with the word of God, I can speak against it. I can condemn that word. I rebuke that word. No, my family's not going to be this way. No, my marriage is not going to look this way. No, you know, my, my heritage or my legacy, whatever it is it's that, that you're being attacked in, you can say, no, I rebuke those words spoken over my life. Mm -hmm. Amen. And this is powerful because this is your position. So I want to give you a couple um, really key um, things. People would say, okay, this is, this is great, Carrie, but how do I, in the journey, how do I actually do this? Okay, so I'm going to give you um, five things, five points, and I'm going to go through these really quickly, okay, because we've got about 10 minutes before we do questions. But there's five things that I'm going to encourage you how you resist the devil. Number one, it's the word of God. Number one, it's the word of God because it is the way, the truth, and the life. And so anything the enemy is saying, he's, it talks about the enemy is the father of all lies. So he's always going to speak, speak opposite of truth. So if we don't have truth inside of us, then lies sound real. Lies sound like your own voice. Isn't it amazing how the enemy uses your voice to tell you who you are? Hey, you're going to get sick. 
Hey, you know what? You're, you're never going to recover that money. Hey, you know, I, you're just a, I'm just a horrible wife. I'm just a horrible mother. I'm just a horrible business man. Whatever it is, the, it's, the enemy will make it sound like your voice. Mm. So what you have to do is you have to put the word inside of you because then the spirit of God is then speaking and saying, no, this is who you are. No, this is what you possess. No, this is how I see you. See, if you don't have truth inside, you, have, you don't have a sword. That's why Hebrews chapter four, verse 12 says, the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. It says piercing and dividing, okay? It says piercing to the division of soul and spirit, right? It shows you what's the difference between your mind, will, and your emotions, your soul, and what is of the spirit? What is of the things of God, right? So it has the ability to says, I'm going to, it's going to be living and active. Okay. It's not just a boring book. It's not just words on a paper. It's living and it's active. So when you speak it forth, it has an active power. That's why I love in um, Isaiah chapter 55, he said, the word that I send will perform that which I sent it to do. It's active. It has, it's like you speak the word and it's like mission impossible coming out of your mouth. <laughs> Doo -doo -doo. No, I'm not going to sing. <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> all right, but it's like, it's active. It has a mission now to accomplish yeah. the life and the authority of that promise towards your situation. It's good. Oh my gosh. That's so good. And we could stay there for a long time. So it's living a dividing to division of joints and of soul and spirit and joints and marrow, meaning it has the ability to show you what's of the flesh. Cause sometimes the word of God needs to say, listen, girl, you're in the flesh, man, get your attitude straight. Hallelujah. <laughs> but Jesus, they are blah, blah. And, and then you get convicted mm -hmm. by righteousness. Wait a minute. You're more than this. This is who you really are. Let go, forgive. Amen. Right. And that's important because sometimes we're trying to resist the devil. Um, but we never want to repent. I'll tell you, part of, part of resisting the devil is any repentance you need to have in a situation. Because sometimes resisting the devil, he'll try to come and do all these things within family or friends or workplace. And there's galore opportunities, okay? Come on, to get offended. To, to, but they should listen to me and I know better and, and don't you know? And guys, there's, there's opportunity, but you need to repent, get your heart in the word, turn towards the spirit and know that this word is active within your life. So that's the number one thing you have to put the word inside of you because it's what shows you what is truth and what is lie. Amen. So you recognize that lie, those, those whisperings of the devil. Also, uh, turn to Jude chapter one, verse 20. I love, uh, I love this verse because the next point is you need to pray in the spirit. This is an important part of resisting the devil. Because sometimes, and this is what I love about um, speaking in tongues. So when you are spirit filled and are speaking in tongues, you are releasing the power of God. And if you are not spirit filled today, can you please call our prayer line 719-635-1111? They would love to tell you about the Holy Spirit. They would love to pray with you and have you pray to receive and then speak in tongues. It is the power of God. If you, if you're trying to resist the enemy without any power, without any confidence of the power you possess, well, then that's difficult, right? So you need to get filled with the power of God. Now people would say, well, can I die and go to heaven and walk the Christian life without being spirit filled? Absolutely. But you're walking around practically naked. So anyway, you need some power. You need to just clothe yourself with that confidence of like, no, wait a minute. And also what I love about praying in tongues is there, there's many times I just don't know what to say, guys. Mm -hmm. Maybe you're, again, you're trying to resist the devil for something in your own life, or you're standing alongside a, a loved one or a friend um, that you don't know how to pray for them. You're just like, oh my gosh, I don't even know. And guys, and there's some ugly situations. I have been in ministry for 23 years full time, and I have seen some of the ugliest situations of just the devil and people and stupidness and just hurt and evil in the world. And in those moments, you're just like, Lord, what do I say? What do I do? How do I? And guys, that's when you need to start speaking in tongues because it says when you speak in tongues, you're praying the perfect will of God. Amen. Man, I want to get, I want to get out my opinions, my everything 
when I pray. And I want to pray in unity with the Spirit of God. This is really important in marriage. <laughs> well, how, Lord, you just need to change him and you need to da, 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 da. No, 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 no. Don't pray your own will. It's called witchcraft. Don't pray your own will over somebody and you just need to, blah, blah, blah. no, just pray in tongues. Because in that moment you're coming, you're, you're crucifying your flesh, you're coming in line with the Spirit and saying, Lord, I'm going to submit to your will. So that is a huge part. So uh, uh, Jude chapter 1 verse uh, 20, I'm going to read this real quick. It says, but you, beloved, building yourselves up in your most holy faith and praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in the love of God, waiting for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ that leads to eternal life. So when you pray in the Spirit, you're building yourself up, guys, which is really important because I'll tell you right now, life will try to discourage you, frustrate you, weary you down where it's like, whatever whatever. I just don't care. And guys, that's a really bad place to be in because when you say, whatever, I don't care. The enemy's like, well, then let me throw some more on you. Right? So, because our, our, our defenses get down. So building yourselves up in your most holy faith is important. And I'll just say this, when I'm praying in the spirit, when I'm, I love to pray in the spirit in the car because I'm just by myself and shanda rabakan. And I know people think I'm just crazy because I'm like, in my car, right? And they're just like, what's going on with that lady? I'm just like, woo. Okay. So it encourages me, helps me stay awake when I'm driving too. It's good. <laughs> All right. It encourages you. It builds up your most holy faith. And it also says it keeps you in the love of God. Amen. It keeps reminding you you're loved. Man, this has no authority. You are loved of God. Who's the devil trying to take your family? Who's the devil trying to take your health and your finances and your peace and your job and your business? Who is this devil? I am loved of God. See, what's praying in the spirit encourages and it brings us into alignment with the love of God. So be in the word, sharper than a two-edged sword. Speak in tongues. You build up your most holy faith and you guard your heart in the love of God. Mm -hmm. Also, you need to listen to the word. Guys, you can listen to secular music all day long. You can listen to the news all day long. You can have background movies all day long. But the thing is, is that what, even if you're saying, well, I'm not even paying attention. I'm just doing my own thing. Guys, I'll tell you, those things are still getting in. Yeah, they are. Right? And so faith comes by hearing. Romans chapter 10, verse 17 talks about faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So the third point is you need to listen to the word. You need to listen to something that is spiritual and edifying. And when I say spiritual, don't just listen to any random teaching. Listen to teaching that is going to produce faith that tells you who you are, who God is, and just exactly how the devil has been defeated, right? You don't want to listen to a whole bunch of teaching that is trying to condemn you and judge you and make you feel like you don't deserve something. So you have to find good teachers. That's why you need to go to awmi.net and listen to all the archives. We have over 200,000 hours plus of free material. Plus we have it on podcasts. Plus we have GTTV. Guys, there is no excuse for you not to be listening. Plus on Pandora, not, not Pandora, on um, uh, our song, our, I, not iTunes. Podcasts? No. Oh my goodness. I just had a... Anyway, the music stations. We have our music uh, stations as well. So we have things, uh, Christian music on there. We have Charlie and Jill LeBlanc on there. We have all the Christian music. So I'm going to encourage you, go to awmi.net and check out all of that, okay? Mm -hmm. Because when you're listening, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So you just keep it going. That's why, you know, we have... We have, you know, the Bible verses going on, you know, while we're cooking and doing stuff. We have praise and worship going in the mornings. You know, when the kids are playing Legos, I'm hearing them sing along. They don't even know they're singing along, right? But they're singing the word as they're doing it. So faith comes by hearing, and that's really, really important, okay? Also, rebuke. Hmm. rebuke. I'll tell you right now, when you get the word inside of you, whether you're reading it and I encourage get your, open up your Bible, read it, write it down. When you do that, when you're speaking in tongues, when you're listening to the word, there does come this attitude. Who's the devil? See, most people want to rebuke the devil, but they never, they don't have any word within them. They don't have any power within them and they haven't been listening to anything that's life giving. So when they rebuke the devil, they're just parroting other words. I resist you or I rebuke you in the name of Jesus, but there's no attitude and there's no faith behind it. Right. And so that's why I put those other three things before rebuking the devil. So use your words. Second Corinthians chapter 10. I want us to turn here really fast. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse three and four says this, for though we walk in the flesh, meaning we're in this world, we have human bodies, we're living on human planet earth today. 
human planet Earth. <laughs> We're living on the Earth <laughs> versus something else. Human planet Earth. <laughs> I was like, okay, okay. okay. Uh, for though we walk in the flesh, we are not waging war according to the flesh. Amen. Guys, there's a total different way we wage war, right? Because we're, we're waging it in the spirit because of the who we are in Christ, that righteous position we have in Christ. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They're not of the flesh. Not, you're not walking around with a machete everywhere, like, come on, devil. <laughs> that would be really cool, okay? But <laughs> my son would love that. But we're not warring in the flesh. We're not walking around with grenades strapped to our bodies, <laughs> ready to battle the devil and whatever he brings to us today. It's not of the flesh. They're not carnal weapons. They're spiritual weapons, right? And it says, but it says not of the flesh. He says, but have divine power to destroy strongholds. You have a divine power. Listen, that's awesome. You have a divine power to destroy strongholds. And a stronghold is basically any mentality, thought, or resistance of the enemy. Then he goes on to say, verse 5, We destroy arguments and every lofty opinion, every, and other versions say, every thought that tries to raise itself against the knowledge of God and take every thought captive to obey Christ, being ready to punish every disobedience when our, diso when our obedience is complete. I love this. It says, you have the ability that every imagination, every opinion, every lofty opinion. Have you ever had a lofty opinion? You know what? This is just stupid. Why don't they do it my way? You know what? I just, they just really need to listen to me. <laughs> yeah. Every lofty opinion, every argument. Sometimes we think it's other people's lofty opinion, but sometimes it's our lofty opinion. So we have to, again, repent, put those before the Lord. And it says that tries to raise itself against the knowledge of God. Again, that's why I said you need to put the word in, because if we're not putting the word in, we don't know if, if something's a lofty thought, something's opposing to the word. Then it says we can take every thought captive. So when a thought, something tries to write, you have to take it captive. So that's why you need to rebuke it. I take this, I rebuke it in Jesus' name. So... Lastly, my last point is, um, because we're, we're out of time, be around like-minded believers. Um, the Bible talks about evil communication corrupts good manners. This is something that, you know, we teach our kids. I remember when I was a teenager, my mom quoted that verse to me all the time. You become like who you hang around. You think like the things that you're listening to. You parrot the people that you hear or are speaking in your life. You become like the five most people around you, right? It's just, it's natural in the world. They, they even know this. You become like the five people that are around you the most. So who's around you in your life? If you're fighting and you're resisting the devil, you need to get around some people who also speak faith, yeah. can speak the word, can pray with you. When they speak, they're speaking in tongues over you. So be around like-minded believers. And when other people throw their opinions, their lofty opinions, that you're going to get sick or you're going to get this or you're going to, oh, you're going to bop, 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 whatever, you can Again, say, I don't receive that. Thank you. I would prefer you not speak that around me, right? And you can then say, you know what? I, I rebuke those words. I do not receive them. So these are five points of how to resist the devil, how to kick him in the head, knock him in the teeth every day. But you know what? When you do this stuff, I'll just tell you right now, you don't just do this on Sunday morning. This is a consistent lifestyle, right? Being in the word, speaking in tongues, hearing the word. So when, again, when the enemy tries to come to steal, kill, and destroy... Because that's what he wants to do. He wants to go the whole shebang. He wants everything. You just stop and say, no, 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 I rebuke you. Because I know what I have. I know who he is. And I know you're defeated. So, amen. Well, I want to get to some questions. I took yes. a little extra time. But I wanted to give you those five nuggets. Because I really feel like right now the enemy's trying to bring a lot of fear. Yeah. Uh, especially with everything with the new coronavirus and the new variant and blah, 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 blah. Guys, I'm going to tell you, he's always going to look for a tactic to steal your peace, steal your focus, and you can resist him. You can stand in faith. You can have peace that passes understanding, but then know how to go forward in the world when, when the enemy's trying to 
again, steal your faith and steal your peace. Amen. Praise God. So yeah. you guys have sent in a lot of awesome questions. We're going to get to as many as we can. So RC on chat says, about the devil repaying, I don't want anything coming to me through the devil's hands. <laughs> How do I deal with that? Mm. <clears throat> well, again, it's not the devil's hands. It's not the devil's hands. It's just that you are just, the way I've always seen it, you know, again, when our, our testimony with our house, it was just like, man, I resist the devil. He has to repay. So guess what? He cannot stop other divine opportunities, divine appointments, divine favor. And that's where he, I mean, he's just, I've resisted him. I just said, you can't touch all the things that good are coming in my life that God's prepared. Amen. So it's not really that the enemy is, you know, dragging something out of the treasure chest of hell and delivering it to you. No, it's not like that. <laughs> but it's more of an attitude of just, no, devil, you, you cannot touch anything for the future. And in fact, everything that's been stolen, God's favor is on me and it's going to be repaid. Amen. It's not like he's doing it gladly. No. no. <laughs> like here, Carrie. No. <laughs> I gladly give over. Adam from text, he texted this question in. He says, does the devil only attack you when you are doing work for the Lord and less when you are about your secular work or studying? Well, he's more likely to attack you when you're doing the work of the Lord because you're more of a threat. And he, and he doesn't want you expanding the kingdom and touching people and reaching the lost. So it, he, he is very aggressive in that sense. But he's also after the unbelievers. I mean, how many unbelievers are dying and sick and, and losing their families and losing their marriages and committing murder? And he, he's just, that's his nature. So yes, he's out to kill, steal, and destroy. It doesn't matter if you're a believer or unbeliever. But as believers, when you're doing the work of the Lord, you are a bigger threat to him. But again, if we know these things, whenever he tries to attack, we resist him and he has to flee and we continue to take the kingdom of God. So you're never in fear of the devil. Like we just don't fear him because he's, he's, he's lost. And when, again, we know these things, we know our position, we know our authority and we know how to act against him. Amen. That's awesome. Samaya on YouTube asked a question that I was wondering. So I found that the majority of churches are more demon conscious than they are Christ, mm -hmm. especially in prayer. So how much time should we spend resisting and how much time should we spend communing with God? So like, which should be more of our focus, the resisting or the submitting to God? The submitting to God, because then the, then the, then the Lord's going to show you what you need to rebuke. Amen. Right. So you're getting direction. Now you're getting, you now are your words, your prayers, your insight is coming from the spirit of God. Not just like, Ooh, I wonder if that's a demon. And you try and do again with your imagination and Oh, what is this? And, and so you can get really demon on every doorknob type of person. No, you just submit to God and they'll show you like, you know what? I just rebuke this and I cast this out. You know, yes, there are demonic forces, but they, they're just as much losers. They're just as stupid and they're just as defeated as the devil. So you have that same approach and you don't be so, oh, it's a demonic. That somehow the demonic is more powerful than the kingdom of God. Absolutely not. And that's a lie of the enemy to try to get you to be in fear. And like, oh, well, I'm just not gifted in knowing what demon to cast out. You just cast it out in Jesus name. Everything responds to the name of Jesus. Simple as that. Amen. Praise God. So MG on YouTube says, if we rebuke the devil for someone in our family, can we do it in a low voice without being heard by that person, <laughs> but knowing that the devil will hear and believe he will run away? Oh yeah, I, I absolutely. You can be praying in tongues and you can be looking, you know, and just saying, you know, I just rebuke the enemy right now. I just Amen. speak peace over this situation. Um, yeah, you can do that, you know, and again, here's the thing that if somebody wants the demonic force and they don't want to change, you know, sometimes you can, you can try to cast out a demon and that person wants to keep it. So I don't override someone's free will. Right. But at the same time I can say, you know, I, I, I rebuke the effects of this enemy. I rebuke this, the lies. I rebuke the anger right now in Jesus name. Sometimes I'll just go to the other room and say, Lord, I just speak peace over the situation. I speak wisdom over me of how to respond and just figuring out how can I speak life into this situation? So sometimes it's not like when somebody's acting like an idiot and you say, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Sometimes it's not really a demon. It's just, they're being an idiot. And so sometimes you rebuking, it's not going to change the situation because it's not a demonic force. It's just somebody's bad that attitude and it's somebody's choice and decision in that moment. So for you in that moment, Lord, how do I speak life? How do I respond in peace? How do I not be anxious or be in fear right now in Jesus name? That's a huge part of changing the situation. 
Amen. versus you getting all worked up and trying to cast something out that they don't want to change. So it's then you going, okay, how can I, in this situation, respond life-giving and then after this continue to bring life to them so that person could realize, because you, you will meet people that are demon-possessed, truly demon-possessed, and they want to keep them. So... How do you start to get them the word? How do you start to disciple them? How do you start to get them to a place where they say, I want to be free? Okay. That's really big. That is really big. And along those same, same lines, Alfredo on chat says, how can I differentiate between behavior modification and the change of heart? And I would say even in that specific situation, how can mm -hmm. you know that you're just not changing your behavior, yeah. but you're, you're actually putting your part, you're seeking God with your heart in that moment? Well, I think this is this is part of the dynamic of why we have to have a relationship with the Holy Spirit, why we have to have a relationship with the Word. Because if you want me to be a certain way, I can change myself to be a certain way, but then I go home and I'm completely different. Yeah. The real Carrie shows up versus that, the Carrie on live Bible study. No, that's why intimacy and relationship with God is, <clears throat> is, is truly the key and the answer because He makes you into who you really are so that you're consistent and it's really a heart change versus just, I'm one way at church and I'm one way with my family, I'm another way with friends, I'm another way with my coworkers. No, you wanna have this consistency from relationship with God that then is, you're not putting on a show, Amen. right? And Amen. so that's really important. So again, getting in the word, speaking in tongues, listening to the word, all of that changes who you are. So it's not just a show because if, if you just do those things on Sunday morning, listen to the word, pray in tongues, you know, be open your Bible It's the first only time you open your Bible is on Sunday morning. Right. Um, then what's going to happen is you will have a double life mm -hmm. because it's not consistent. So that's why all of these things that I shared, that's a daily thing that happens, not just mm -hmm. Sunday morning, Wednesday night kind of thing. Amen. That's really good. Uh, Faith on YouTube says, when the devil attacks, my first thought is, did I do anything wrong that gave the enemy opportunity? Or are there familiar spirits still hanging around that just won't go away? Um, I could say that it, it could very easily be both, mm -hmm. you know, in the sense of, okay, so yes, uh, sometimes we do open a door to the enemy. Again, we'll take offense at something, you know, we, we've, we've put garbage in, right? We've allowed, you know, we, we're watching movies that got the sex scenes in them and we're watching, you know, stuff. And so then when the enemy tries to come with lust or temptation, then in that moment, number one, it's not who you really are. Again, spirit, soul, and body. So I encourage you take the, get the free course of the basics that we're offering the Karis course. It is amazing because it's uh, identity in Christ. And uh, excuse me, it's uh, spirit, soul, and body, and identity in Christ. Those two courses together, it's amazing. Because in that moment, you start, if you have this lust or this temptation, it's like, you know what? That's not who I really am. So I'm going to turn from the things of the flesh. That's when you turn, you repent and say, Lord, I'm sorry for putting garbage in me. Lord, I repent for, for giving, you know, putting those seeds in my heart and in my thought, you know, putting that inside of me so the enemy could bring it back up as a temptation. So Lord, I just repent and I turn towards the spirit. So yes, there's many times we'll open the doorway to the enemy, but it's as simple as turning from the things of the flesh to the things of the spirit. It isn't like, oh my gosh, I just, I've lost the favor of God. I've got to get resaved and I got to, you know, help three little old ladies across the street. And I got to give more tithes and da, 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 to close this door. No, you just close the door. No, I, no, in, in Jesus name, I'm not going to do that anymore. And you turn towards the spirit. That's, see, the enemy wants to make it like resisting him is so much bigger, so much grander, so much more laborsome, so much more condemning than it is. You just yeah. shut the door, you repent, and keep going. And then if there's things that are, are that you just keep around you and you never really repented and got rid of, well then yeah, that it, it's still part of, you know, when you talk about familiar spirits, it's just part of your thought mentality. So that's why Romans chapter 12, verse two, you transform your mind to the word of God. So then what's used to be familiar, what used to be of the world, you start to look at and say, no, I'm not like that anymore. I, I rebuke that. Yeah. And then those voices lose their power in your life to tempt yeah. you. Amen. That's profound. Well, thank you guys for submitting your questions. Yes, thank you. Um, those of you who we didn't get to your questions, uh, once a week we always have a question and answer roundup. Yep. 
Yep. Sounds so country. I like that. <laughs> and that's usually, we'll do that on Tuesday afternoon at 3 yes. on Facebook, on Andrew Womack Ministries Facebook. So, And then I'm going to encourage you, um, Andrew has a book, um, The Believer's Authority. Mm. This is really important because uh, many times you can know that God loves you, you know that you're saved, that you're righteous, but most people don't know their authority in Christ. And so everything that I share today, that would be really good in spirit, soul, and body, this free basics course. Mm -hmm. If you were to get that, that would be a huge blessing. But then also um, when you call the prayer line or get online, Believer's Authority is an amazing series and book that you could really start to look at and put inside of you. Amen. Praise Amen. God. And don't can, I, can I pray for everybody? Yes, please. Do. Okay, so I know that the enemy maybe is attacking you in different ways and there's all kinds of situations and I'm just going to encourage you again, this whole like-minded believers um, and praying in tongues, call the prayer line. They would love to agree with you and come in and um, just uh, a, the power of the word come and say, no, we resist the devil. We speak the word. Please let them pray with you. That would be tremendous encouragement to you. And then also when you ask them, just saying, I'm going through this situation. What does Andrew have? What if one of the speakers, teachers have that I could really then put the word inside of my heart to resist the devil? And so I'm just going to pray over you. I don't know what's going on. Maybe it's health issues, family issues, job issues. Maybe it's depression, things like that. Maybe it's things with your family and your kids. Listen, the devil is defeated. Amen. He is a defeated foe. When Jesus was on the cross, he said, it is finished. And because of that, he gave you the right, the authority, the position, and the power to live victorious, to have abundant life. See, most people quote John chapter 10, verse 10, the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. What's the rest of it? Do you know what the rest of it is? But Jesus said, but I come to give you life and give it to you with abundance. See, this is the difference. If there's something being trying to steal, kill, and destroy, it is the devil. It's not God because God only has abundance for you. So that means we can resist the devil and you can get out of all this and start walking in the abundant life of God. So, Lord, I just thank you for every person watching right now. Lord, I just, I just speak right now over them that they would not be anxious about anything. And there's a lot that would try to steal their, their peace and steal their joy. But Lord, I just thank you. Like your word says, we do not be anxious about anything, but we give everything to you with thanksgiving, every prayer, every supplication, every request we give to you with thanksgiving. And it says, and then the peace of God that passes understanding would come across and be on everyone's heart. So I just speak the peace of God and that peace guard their hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. And so if it's family situation, health situations, anything like this, we just speak the word right now that we will prosper, that he is the way, the truth, and the life. We resist you, enemy. You have no authority over my brothers and sisters, over these situations. They are victorious. They're children of God. And every high thought, everything trying to exalt itself above the name of Jesus, we rebuke right now in Jesus name. Amen. And so spirit of God, I thank you that you stir up faith. You stir up attitude within everyone's hearts because faith has come because they've been listening to the word this morning. So Lord, we love you. We thank you in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. <laughs> you guys have a great day and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Join us every weekday for our daily live stream on Gospel Truth TV. 